Deliverance meeting is for all those in five four, all those that are serious about walking free in this season. And when you cross it over to the year 2022, the year 2022 is a year of champions. Amen. And so God wants you to be set free. So that's going to be 7 p.m. at the headquarters location of Glory Bow Fellowship International Church in Lee Summit, Missouri. This here deliverance meeting, I do not um, record the deliverance meeting. I will not be live streaming the deliverance meeting. So you need to be here. Amen. So that's Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. You can call 816-795-1900 to be a part of what myself and Cry Loud Ministry will be doing um, for you. I advise individuals you want to do some form of fasting, at least putting your meat and sweets out on um, starting on Thursday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, that is a really good um, method that the Lord has always given me in reference for deliverance meeting. How about you say this cat only comes out by praying fasting. So we will be working with the anointing, amen, in reference to um, coming in. And so the number for um, Dr. Wright is going to call in. She's having difficulty getting in through the Zoom. Um, the number, I believe, is 816-576-7400, 816-576-7400. We know that's, you know, and no wonder the Lord told me to get on these other social platforms as well. Um, we know how the enemy try to work when you got a good word, amen. You know, you put two prophets together, you know it's going to be a powerhouse. So also remember on November the 23rd, uh, we will have our Thanksgiving Bible study because of Thanksgiving. We'll not have Bible study that Wednesday, amen. And so we'll do it that Tuesday. We always have a special service. And Hanukkah will start on November the 28th at sundown. It's a powerful time. So that Sunday at sundown, it will start. And but Bishop will give us um, some teaching. I love to receive the the nuggets. Amen. So if Dr. Wright, um, you someone can text Dr. Wright so that she will be able to join us and she can just call in so we can get that number to her so she can call call in this morning. Amen. So welcome. So welcome. I see DL and Dr. Finance and Anne Marie and Kiva and Brenda and Pamela. And Deaconess Kier, thank you guys for being here this morning. So as we work in getting Dr. Wright to join us, because we, had, we were just speaking and one of the scriptures, the Lord, um, that came up, um, I like to, when sometimes, you know, when the father is speaking, he don't have to give us this whole huge, you know, dissertation. So the word fight, and we were just talking about fight, the proper ways um, of fighting. And so the scripture, and I don't know if Dr. Wright, she didn't share with me, um, what scripture she was going to, she was going to be using, but this is a scripture that the Lord had on, you know, had on my heart that we're going to go over and, and look at. Amen. So let's get our Bible. And let's go over um, to the scripture of Timothy. We're going to be in the book of Timothy. Amen. Let's look at first Timothy um, chapter, uh, first Timothy chapter six. But let's start, I want to look at verse 12, but I want to, let's start at verse 11. I'm going to read it from the NLT, amen. I'm going to read it from the NLT. So I don't know, um, Debbie D, who's over there, you guys let me know when Dr. Wright um, gets on so that I know that um, she is here, amen. A hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I'm going to read from the NLT, and I am going to start at verse 11. And these were some instructions, amen that um, Paul, um, his, some, Paul's final instructions. And so starting at verse 11 and to verse um, 12, here's what it says. But you, Timothy, are a man of God. So run from all these evil things, pursue righteousness and a godly life along with faith, love, perseverance, and guiltiness. Here we go. And Dr. Rye on the line. Fight the good fight for the true faith hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you which you have declared so well before any witnesses amen so Dr. Wright are you there I am here amen how we had to fight listen we fighting a good fight of faith right now live and in color hallelujah yes, we are <laughs> amen Glory. So, Dr. Wright, I don't even know, for those of you, this is a, uh, a seasoned, mature woman of God, amen, and she is a prophet of God, amen, 
Dr. Wright, what, what scripture did you have? I'm telling you, uh, Prophetess, I went on a journey with the Lord. I first want to talk about Luke 175. It says, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Second Corinthians says, 7 and 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I can go on and on, but one thing we do know about God, he said in 1 Peter 1, 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Mm. That Hallelujah. is the message from the Lord for these end times. Because he sees, God knew that in these times we would be overflowed with filthiness, seduction, perversion, uh, all kinds of sexual sins, all kinds of uh, seductive things people will do undercover. And his message has always been, be ye holy, for I am holy. There's no way for anybody to get around that word. Amen. Amen. And, and, you know, over the last month, you know, I have been just plowing, you know, in there where it says a, a reference to, you know, that why holiness and is, is, is needed for such a time and such in these times. And I think um, the reason why the father is having a prophet to speak this because there are those of us, you know, who are sold out for God and we're living in a culture. I, you know, Dr. Wright, I, I, I'm so glad for you that you can keep me balanced, you know, amen. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're, you know, you carry some burdens from the Lord. And you, I feel like sometimes, like um, Isaiah said, whoa, I'm around a people unclean lips. Amen. And so when we're like that, it's good to have other like-minded believers, you know, around us. And so we already know that's like the Lord had to tell the prophet um, Elijah, listen, there are 7,000 that have <laughs> not, hallelujah, bowed, yeah. their, bowed down to these other gods. And so even in this time right now, I feel that God, is 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 one to use us and and to speak to the to the people of god you know because when we when i was speaking to you about the fight amen and that's why i read uh first about fight the good fight of faith but there's a proper way to fight and you gave a revelation but there are two there's two fights going on amen do you remember when we were speaking of uh, that revelation that as we was talking about the fight that you gave yes i said that there are two fights that are being fought right now. Everybody, every man, woman, boy, and girl is in a fight. But are you fighting from a standpoint of unrighteousness or are you fighting from a standpoint of righteousness? And the reason that those are different is what and who is on your side while you fight. Mm. Now, we might be fighting the devil and not be saved, but we're fighting him because he's trying to get our children, break up our marriages and all that. We're not saved, though. We have not accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. Guess what? That is going to uh, cause God to do some passive fighting for you. What I mean by Woo! that, you're going to have some unjust rain poured on you because he cannot actively release the angels of the Lord and do the things he said he'd do for the righteous when you are unrighteous. So yes, he's going to do some things to help you out because he's a loving God, because he's a God of mercy, because he's a God of grace. But don't ever believe that God is targeting the enemy to destroy him in your life because why should he and you have not given your life to him? Amen. Even, and, and Dr. Wright, you say that ahead. I think and so many times people think, yes, because God is a God of the universe and we know that he's sovereign, but we have to, you know, there's some, there, if, if we would take the time and look at the blessings that are attached to the righteous. Now we know that when we um, come before the Lord, it's a credit unto us righteousness, but we have to receive that. If you know that you're righteous, there's some things you need to transform in your life because that was given to you. And this is the reason why God is talking about it. And I think we mix righteousness and holiness together at times. But we're supposed to pursue holiness. That means, yes, you came in as a filthy rag undone. 
we know that the moment that you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you are now into the kingdom of light. But there are some dark things that you brought over with you that now that you must fight the good fight of faith and be able to what? Cleanse your life up. This is what the deliverance meeting is about. This is what fasting is about. This is what reading your word is about. And, you know, I, I just say for me, Dr. Ryan, I didn't grow up in church and you didn't grow up in church either. But when I came out the world, I came in to, to when I came in, I came in wholeheartedly that my custom stopped, my nightclub going stopped. And I just don't understand how individuals expect for God. He's a holy God. And, 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 and you, and you can talk even more on this. When we look at the scriptures, it says that the priests, they don't understand. That's why we understand our Jewish, the Jewishness of Jesus. There was a rope with a bell on it tied around the priest's leg. That when he went into the holies of holiness, just in case, if he had been in any type of sin or, or what have you, that if nobody was going to take the chance to go in and put to go in there and get him out, they was going to use that rope to pull him out. That is still the same God that we serve today, and thank God for the blood of Jesus. But we cannot approach him any kind of way. We can't rob him, and then they don't even get. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to even get. Get, get even get on that bunny trail because we rob him and then that's the same God we want to save our husband the same God we asking to save our marriage and all of this and see it's Satan notice Dr. Wright there is a proper way that and Satan was in heaven with God here's what we forget people so you can't approach you can't approach God any kind of way and that's the reason why the book of Revelation 12 said we overcome Satan by the power of the blood, the testimony of Jesus Christ, and we love not our lives unto death. But right up before that, in the, uh, in the upper couple of verses of that, it's, it, it says that he what, he accuses the brethren day and night. Touch on yes. that so we can get on. He yes. accusing the brethren day and night. Well, we don't understand that the enemy, the devil, is our enemy all the time even when he's tempting us to do something even when he's trying to push us into sin he's still going before god saying look at that look at that that's your creation that's the one that say they love you look at what they're doing now he's the one that's pushing you into trying to commit sin he's also the accuser it's just like a person kills somebody and then they go and say, look, somebody was killed. Well, you were the one that did it. He's the one. But we forget that he stood before a holy God, and he knows the, the movement and the actions of God. And when he got into his mind that he's better than God, he should be equal to God, he forgot. He, he was created by God, and that same God said, come on, Michael, you and the boys, throw him out of here. Who does he think he is to try to <laughs> overthrow me that created him? But I want to go back. This scripture is sticking with me. So I want to just spend two or three minutes, well, not even two or three minutes, just a minute on them. Yes, flow, yes, flow. Second Corinthians 7 and 1. Listen to what it says. Having therefore these promises. What promises? The promises that come when you accept Jesus Christ, not just any promises, the promises that are afforded to you after you accept Jesus. He said, so having therefore these promises, the one that come after you have accepted Jesus Christ, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Now, you've got the promises. You've become righteous because you've accepted Christ, but you still have work to do to cleanse your flesh and spirit from sin. Yes. And while you're doing that, it says perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That whole sentence says it all. We got the promises of God. Yes, we do once we accept Christ, but there's work to do. Cleanse yourself. And, and what that means is, Allow God to start that transformation process where you're getting rid of old you and taking on the new man. He says, and as you're doing that, remember, all of it is supposed to be perfecting holiness in you. 
because that's the ultimate goal. God's coming back for a holy people. Period. Period. And 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 and, and it says what a glorious church. I think we forget that a glorious yeah. church without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. And that is the reason why we in the body of Christ, you know, and, and we got to understand there, there is a remnant, amen, that the remnant, and, and that's filled, I, I feel that God is using me in these last end days that I, I, I must keep the hands of the remnant. I must keep the hands of those that they want to walk right. They want to live right. There, there are those that do. There are others that are out there. Yes, you got a, a title of a Christian, but you look nothing like your God. You look right. nothing like your God. And I'm just bold enough to say it. I'm at a point, either you want to serve God or go serve Satan. There's no in-between right now. There's no because the gospel, we have the Bible. You can Google anything. You can Google whatever it is you want. But the issue is, Dr. Wright, and this is how my, when I stepped in my call, one of the scriptures that God kept giving me over and over again, who is my mother, my brother, my sister, except they that hear the word of God and obey the word of God. I see Amen. so many individuals that allow family members, that allow friends to tell to take them off the path of Christ. Or we're looking at the culture, or we're saying, Well, God knows my heart. Do we not understand? Let's let's just let's give let's let's give a reminder to the church. Let's give a reminder to the body of Christ that God wiped out the earth and started over with a man called Noah. God wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. We don't Amen. love the homosexuals and all of us got somebody in our family. And I hope that you are preaching to them. Amen. And stop looking out outside and what everybody else is doing because the homosexual agenda is there to, to let you know that, that God timeline is winding up. And the, yes. the, what we should be saying to them, listen, and exposing to them, listen, don't get tricked by Satan. The Antichrist is coming without a gender. So he thinks in the end, he's so perverted that in the end, he going to say, oh, all y'all homosexuals, y'all going to join me. And you're going to be like, what do you mean? You're going to join me in hell. Right. That's what's going to happen. Amen. And so Amen. we want to love the people, those that have an ear to hear, let them hear. What the, what the, that's, I think it's in the book of Luke, um, doc, Dr. Wright, when mm -hmm. it says the Lazarus and the beggar, he says, you yeah. have the prophets that don't spoke to you. He said, I'm not sending nobody from the dead to talk to right. you. You didn't talk to your family before then, that you didn't listen to the prophets. You didn't listen to people in your family. And now that you in hell, you think that now I'm going to send somebody back and you now telling them, well, you should be preaching a lot. We should be preaching a gospel right now to our family members. We should be preaching a gospel right now in our churches. We should be preaching a gospel right now in the workplaces. And Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Preaching it by word and example. Now, you can do a lot of talking all day long. Anybody, I don't mean you. I mean globally you. A person can yes. talk all day long. Bottom line, or are you living it? And that's what people want to see. Now, Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Don't we know that if God doesn't see holiness in us, it doesn't matter about how many people we got saved and how many churches we built and, and how many homeless we fed and all those other things. If he doesn't see holy and how many let's listen, Christ. we on social media and how many followers you have and how many right. this and that. <laughs> right. Because the bottom line is just like the word says. In the end, you got to save yourself. He's Come not gonna now. ask me, what did my husband do? What did my children do? Did I have a good pastor? Did I have a good church? Uh, all those things. He's gonna say, Margaret, what did you do in these years on earth I gave you? And I will have no excuse if I have not done the will of God, because it's all recorded anyway. Woo! So, Dr. Wright, 
So that you 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 know, I'm, I'm, right now I'm, I'm just woo, I'm just fired up. So let's get practical. Yeah. How can we help? How can the people in these last and evil days fight the good fight of faith? How can they continue to stand in spite of all the culture that we see and everything that's surrounding us and all of that? Give us let, help. Let's let give us something just so we can give some people some things, some practical ways to stand. All right. This is the first to me. This came to my mind immediately when you said that. First and foremost, in every situation, circumstance, event in our lives, we have to take this stand. I believe God, period. Amen. No matter what it looks like, no matter what the doctors have said, no matter what they're saying on the job, no matter what the economy says, no matter what they say on the news, I believe God, meaning I believe what God has said, I believe who God is, I believe what God can do. We have to have that, we have to start that foundation. Because if we don't, everything is going to knock us down. We get a you, Okay, you, hear, you, you guys hear that over here on, social, on the social platforms. Write that down. I believe, believe God. Believe God. Amen. We have to start with that premise. And I believe in the Son of God, not just God. He sent his Son as our advocate. I believe in the Son of God, only Jesus the Christ. Nobody else now. Because there's a lot of people. I saw on the, on the Internet the other day, some man said, I'm Jesus, just deal with it. I said to myself, who are you? You Jesus. Oh, my. So <laughs> we've got to believe in the true and living Savior, Jesus the Christ from Nazareth, that was born thousands of years ago. He's not walking the earth now. He has come in the form of the Holy Spirit. So we have to believe in that Jesus. Amen. Jesus God Christ of I, Nazareth, who has come in the flesh. flesh. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, God with us. Give us give us two more, Dr. Wright. Give us two more. All right. Then after you believe in, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I have to stand on the word of God, the promises found in the 66 books, not the hidden books, not the Dead Sea Scroll book, not these <laughs> other books, the 66 books. We have to find everything we need to stand on in the Bible, the word of God. And then we got that. Stand on the word. And then we got to rely, first of all, we have to know the voice of God and rely on his spirit. Know the voice of God and rely on his Now, the voice of God is going to be in agreement with the word of God. If it's not, you got to submit the voice because the words going to always stand. He said, my word shall always stand. Not a jot or tittle will be destroyed. This whole world will fade away, but his word is going to stand. And Jesus was the word physically, and the Bible is the word printed. So. Okay. And, okay. Now, you, they said we got two minutes. Okay, okay. So, believe in God, stand on the word, and hear the Holy Spirit. And Dr. Wright, we want to come back. I got one minute. We need some people to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because we, we oh, and we going to have to deal with that. Amen. So, so Amen. people can properly hear and discern by having the Holy Spirit living the inside of them. Well, once again, right. we're about running out of time. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I want to thank Dr. Wright. You're going to fight the good fight of faith. Go amen. back, amen. Look at the scripture in 1 Timothy. Do your homework in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Go to Hebrews. All the scriptures that she gave out, amen. This here was being recorded on the other platforms over here, so I'll, we can be able to get that and get that out there. And we, as we leave this here platform, and this here airways that we have took over by the power of God, Jesus is Lord. Lord. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, feel free to partner with us by sowing a seed at gbfic.org or mailing a check to Morning Glory at 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Summit, Missouri, 64064. If you need special prayer of any kind, please feel free to call us at 816 816- Seven nine five one nine zero zero. 
As the days get shorter and the nights get colder, our homeless neighbors need our help. There is a place in our city where they can find warmth, love, and hope. For 97 years, City Union Mission is that place. It is.